Okay, uh, thank you everyone for coming. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna start with just a quick introduction and welcome you all to the call. We'll then jump into an overview of the program. Uh, we'll discuss the application process. And then we have a couple of our participants from last year. We have uh, one of our mentors and two of our navigators from 2023 who are here. And you're welcome to ask them questions and they're gonna share a bit about their experiences with the program. And then we'll have a quick closeout. So thank you all for being here. If at any point you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll make sure to get to them. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat as well, we welcome you to do that. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Manju to get us started. Thank you, Hannah. And uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning to everyone here. Thank you for joining the call um, on the Advocacy Navigator uh, program for 2024. My name is Manju Chathani Gada. I'm the director of the Global Movement Building program in AVAC. And uh, I work on this program with my colleague, Hannah Nelson, who will be leading the rest of the call. Um, <clears throat> the Advocacy Navigator program is a newer program for AVAC. This will be the third cohort that we will be bringing in. And I'm very excited to tell you a little bit about the program and then hand over to Hannah, my colleague, to lead us through the rest of the call and give you all the details uh, I know you are interested in and why you are here today. Um, so Hannah, if we can go to the next slide, please. So the Adv Nav Advocacy Navigator Program, uh, as I said, is a uh, is a newer program, and this is the third year of it. It is a training and mentorship program in HIV prevention, advocacy, and global health equity designed for early and mid-career advocates. It is not for seasoned advocates. And what I mean is uh, if you've got many years of experience, if you have already done advocacy uh, programs, if you have led programs, then this is not for you. You are somebody who is seasoned and who we look to in the field to mentor younger and newer advocates to this space. The program leverages the strength of the AVAC Fellows Program. The AVAC Fellows Program is uh, one of AVAC's sig signature programs. It is in its 13th year it is a program for advocates that is one and a half years uh, long and is a very intensive program. And when we saw the successes of the alumni program, we really wanted to have something that was shorter and easier to uh, implement and online so a, a number of people could really ex um get a lot out of the, the learning that fellows get as well. But we are doing well, this program yeah, in partnership on. with the fellows program because the mentors uh, are from the alumni, the alumni fellows um, who have a lot of experience, who are seasoned advocates and can offer mentorship as well as networking to the incoming group. Individuals accepted into this program will gain access to vast knowledge and experience of the alumni network while also participating in online coursework and advocacy strategy. Next slide. So this is designed, as I said earlier, for early and mid-career professionals looking to jumpstart their HIV prevention advocacy skills or strengthen them if they are newer to this work. Um, what does it entail? Curated online coursework, uh, which is pretty extensive, but really carefully planned. So you get the information you need. Personalized mentorship, and you're gonna hear more about the mentorship 
later and uh, who get to be mentors and how mentors are selected, but as well paired with the mentees. Uh, intentional networking, which means that through your six months of the program, you will have a chance to meet other <clears throat> navigators as well as be connected with alumni and other resources in the field. And <clears throat> the program is built on experiential learning, which means a lot of what you will gain, the skills you will gain um, here throughout this short program, we will uh, provide exercises and opportunities for you to practice the skills you've learned and apply the knowledge you've learned. So with that, I am actually going to hand over to Hannah now to tell you more about the program and also uh, share some of the testimonials from previous navigators. Hannah, over to you. Great. Thank you, Manju. Um, and to introduce myself, my name is Hannah Nelson. As Manju said, I work with her on the global movement team here at AVAC, and I oversee the Advocacy Navigator program. Um, yeah. May I ask if you are, are joining us to please put yourself on mute? Thank you. Um, so these are just a few of the testimonials from uh, from our cohort last year. Rhoda's actually on the line with us. Um, but overall, you know, what we've heard from our participants is that the program does help them sort of, as Manju said, jumpstart their careers in this space, help them learn more about the science, learn more about biomedical HIV prevention, and provides a lot of resources and skill building in the area of advocacy if that's something that's new to you. Um, this is a, also a, a quote from uh, Alice Kayongo, who's also on the line, who was one of our star mentors, um, who played a crucial role in connecting her navigators with, with networks, um, getting some of their pieces that they wrote published. Um, she was instrumental in, in making sure that the program was uh, valuable to her mentees. And this is also from one of our pilot participants back in 2021, um, who also talks about how this program sort of helped jumpstart her career as well and connected her to opportunities like the YALI program, which brought her to DC. Um, so just to reiterate, the program is six months long and will be starting in June of this year. And the first three months are comprised of an online course where you will, you know, join the platform, you go through the coursework, uh, there's a schedule, there's a syllabus that tells you exactly what coursework you are to complete each week, along with the associated assignments that go with that. The assignments are really there to help you build an advocacy action plan, to help you apply the knowledge that you've just learned and to sort of reinforce everything that you've just absorbed. It is a lot of information. This is not something that you should take lightly. Uh, some of the information can be quite scientific, quite dense. Um, we go over everything from uh, VMMC to PrEP to PEP to the research process to vaccines, cure research, and everything in between. So it really is extremely comprehensive and is not something that can be done um, on the side. It does require a good amount of uh, attention. And you'll be able to hear from our panel and they can um, they can vouch for that too. After you finish the three months of coursework, um, there's an opportunity to design a community advocacy project, and then three months are spent implementing that. And the projects range in topic and in scope, but are generally community focused and quite small. Uh, they need to be something that can be executed in three months on a very limited budget. Um, participants can expect that this will take between three and six hours of their week. It really depends on where you're at in the program, how comfortable you are reading and writing in English, and um, how much time you participate in, in engaging with your mentor. Uh, your mentors are there for you. We hope that you take advantage of them if you're paired with a mentor, um, but they're there to help you with your coursework, help you with any additional resources with networking and with designing and implementing community projects. Um, this is something we really want to drive home. Um, something we realized last year is that some participants fell behind early. They didn't realize how much coursework and how much work was actually involved and they did fall behind. Most, uh, I think all of them who implemented their projects did catch up, but it took a lot of effort. So um, if you plan on applying to the program, we want this expectation to be quite clear. Um, it does require a good amount of time. Again, I'm gonna ask you to please mute yourself. Thank you. 
So um, at the beginning of the program, those who are accepted will fill out a mentorship survey, which helps match them with mentors. You're not guaranteed to get with the mentor of your choice, but we do our best to match you based on time zone, interest, country, things like that, to make sure that you can get the most out of their experience. Um, participants can expect to meet with their mentors at least once a week and to communicate with them over digital formats, such as WhatsApp calls, Zoom calls, uh, texting, email, things like that. We did have some mentor-mentee pairs in the same country, and those people met up in person, which is also great, but we can't guarantee that that will be the case. The program is designed to be remote. Um, and again, we ask um, everybody who participates in the program to sign um, some terms of reference, which really just acknowledge that we are here uh, together and we mutually respect each other's time. So if you commit to something, if you commit to a meeting, if you commit to getting in a report, to completing your coursework, that you will do that on time. And if you can't, you will communicate it early so that we're not wasting anyone's time. Um, the, the There is a lot. It is relatively competitive. We have a lot of applicants and very few spots. Um, so, you know, we just want people to be mindful that this is an opportunity and um, there are plenty of other people who would want to take advantage as well. So our application process, we're really looking for people who are dedicated and committed and really understand how they want this program to contribute to their work in this space. Um, so in terms of setting expectations, all the coursework, all the mentorship is provided free of cost. But AVAC does not pay any navigators to participate in the program. We do provide everyone, mentors and navigators, with a very modest communication stipend so that they can purchase internet bundles and so they can have texting and calling minutes so that they can connect with their mentors. It is modest and we do expect, but it is sufficient to be able to complete the coursework. So, um, you know, if, if you say that you can't engage because you didn't have funds, for, for internet, um, you know, this is meant to offset that. And we do expect the funds to be used for the coursework and not for your own, um, you know, per personal internet streaming needs. Um, but again, through the first three months of the program, we'll be monitoring your progress, your engagement, we'll be speaking with mentors and we'll try to understand who is actually demonstrating a high level of engagement. And those individuals will be eligible to apply for the modest grant to implement their community advocacy project. If we find that you fall behind in your coursework, you're skipping meetings with your mentor, that you're really not following through, then uh, you will not be eligible for a grant. It's not guaranteed. It really is only available to those who are um, engaging with the, with the program at a high level. Um, again, the coursework is hosted on AVAC's learning platform called Engage, where you will each have your own profile. Um, the courses have a range of different formats. There are readings, case studies, videos, PowerPoint presentations, audio clips, quizzes, assignments. We tried to make it as dynamic as possible, um, and we also tried to make it as accessible as possible so that everyone can engage. Um, this is a blended learning opportunity so you can create your own schedule along with your mentors about when you meet with them when you take the coursework when you do the assignments but it is expected that they're done each week when you and how you get them done is entirely up to you this is a very broad overview of the curriculum. Um, so we have sort of an introduction to the program where we try to understand your learning goals, um, your history, your experience, um, where your mentor you know, gets to know you and, and what your um, objectives are and where you're coming from. Lesson one is really focused on the biomedical HIV prevention landscape. So we start with um, prevention products that are available, those that are still in research, we discuss the research process, we discuss product introduction and access, and we discuss um, other, this is a very heavy, dense, scientific uh, focused lesson. Um, and then we pivot to HIV prevention advocacy. Here, we focus a lot on case studies and on learning what's worked in the past, but really understanding um, you know, the, the foundations of advocacy, what makes it successful, how to do things like networking, things like that. There are assignments that go with each of the modules. Lesson three is when you'll start really applying everything that you've learned to build up an advocacy action plan. This is a very large, big, you know, uh, global or local thinking, uh, sorry, regional or national level project or whatever it is that you want to implement. It is not the same as the community advocacy project. And I want to make that clear. The purpose of building the advocacy action plan and the lessons that you'll go through in uh, lesson three and lesson four are all about how you would carry out advocacy on a larger scale, a bigger project. 
Um, this is not something that AVAC can and will fund. This is really to give you the opportunity to learn how to put these things together, how to create a budget, how to create a work plan, how to create a monitoring and evaluation plan. It really is trying to strengthen that muscle. Um, learning about fundraising, learning about proposal writing, all the things that you might need if you were to lead a much bigger project in this space. After you finish uh, lessons one through four, that is when you will take everything that you've learned and you will design and craft a much, much, much smaller community advocacy project. And those are the ones that are eligible for modest funding. Um, again, we, we sort of talked about the communication tools and Engage already, but Engage is the platform where we will host all the course content. Uh, there are quizzes on there. There's an opportunity for social networking where you can connect with other navigators and AVAC staff. And we will help train everyone on how to use the platform and how to access it. But you need a certain level of comfort and familiarity with technology, with laptops. The course and the program cannot be done on a mobile phone. It is absolutely necessary to have access to a laptop or a desktop computer to be able to complete the course. We will use email and WhatsApp for basic communication. And then we will be using Google Drive um, and the Google suite of materials for assignments taking you know, project document sharing and other materials. So you do also need a certain level of familiarity with Google Drive to be able to go through the program with comfort and ease. We'll provide some basic training and resources, but it is not AVAC's responsibility to do a full robust training on these communication tools. So just um, you know, an awareness that these are some of the, the tools that we'll use and you will be expected to have some familiarity with them if you were to apply to the program. Um, and then uh, last little bit, I think I'm about to wrap up here so we can leave time for your questions, but the community advocacy project is really intended to be a very small communities based project that will be designed by the navigator in collaboration with their mentor and the purpose here is to practice applying some of the coursework, the purpose of this program is not to apply to get grant funding for your project. That is not the intention. The purpose of this program, it is this po is a professional development opportunity to strengthen your knowledge or get new knowledge in spaces that you might not have had it before. Um, we really encourage people to think about their community advocacy project when they're applying and what they would wanna do. It could change later on. It doesn't have to be the same idea, but we will not be, um, it, you know, you will not get bonus points for designing some very large, very robust national level advocacy campaign that, you know, would realistically take years to implement. We're really looking for something very small, very targeted, very realistic, centered around a topic that interests you and in a community that you either identify with or ally with. So for example, um, these are just examples of some of the projects that navigators can and could engage in. Um, it's three months. It's a maximum budget of fifteen hundred U.S. dollars. Um, the types of activities that we saw last year, you know, we saw some objectives to, you know, raise awareness or do some community education around new prevention products. We saw a couple of navigators get opinion pieces published in uh, national newspapers. Very realistic to do in three months. We had um, some policy briefs developed. We had some community sensitization meetings. We had a demand of asks for adolescent girls and young women with disabilities. We had another navigator work with the homeless population in Kenya, trying to understand their needs and working with the local health facilities to make the um, services more accessible. So these are, we're thinking small, we're thinking local. We really don't want some large, you know, um, expansive project because it's just not what this program was designed for. Um, these are some of the key dates and that should say 2024 and I apologize for that, oops. Uh, but March 8th is the application deadline. Um, for some candidates, we might ho have a very short interview just to you know meet the candidates, ask a few more questions. Um, we anticipate having responses in early May we will be holding um, an orientation. It should just be about an hour and a half uh, during the week of May 27th to 31st, but the exact date will be uh, communicated closer to that time. And then will the online course will start on June 3rd and the program itself will end on December 8th. So this is, uh, this is the timeline we're working against, but the most important date right now is that application deadline of March 8th. Um, we really encourage you to get them in before that, um, but that's we must have all the materials in by then. 
um, this is, the, I won't spend too much time on this, but, um, you know, the mentors who, um, who apply and who are successful, um, they will have a mentor training. We want to make sure that we set expectations for the program. They understand the syllabus, the curriculum, how to use the engage platform, and then some effective tools and strategies for being a supportive mentor. The navigators will also participate in a program orientation to do a lot of the same things, to go over the curriculum, to understand how to access course materials, to introduce you to the Engage platform, and to answer any questions before the course gets started. Um, this is a little bit more of a note on who we're looking for for this program. Manju sort of touched on this, but we are looking primarily from Eastern and Southern Africa, though we will consider candidates from West Africa and other locations. Um, the reason we're focusing on Eastern and Southern Africa is because that is where our networks are. That is where the bulk of our mentors and uh, fellow alumni will be. Um, so we just want to make the best selections possible. That said, if there are some compelling projects and candidates from Namibia, from Botswana, from Nigeria, then we will definitely consider those. But we just, this is where we will pull the bulk of our participants from. Um, the level of experience that you have, again, we're looking for greener, people who are newer to the field, people who would benefit from this really comprehensive package of information, um, availability. We wanna make sure that the people who, um, who, who are applying actually have the time and space to be able to do go through the program. And then those who are really demonstrate interest in wanting to learn more about HIV prevention advocacy. That's sort of what we'll, we'll be looking for. Um, again, we're gonna do our best to match our mentors um, with the navigators based on their mutual interests and areas of expertise. And that will be done using a survey and some other methods. And then um, we'll be matching them with uh, successful mentors from our alumni community. Again, what are we looking for? Demonstrated interest in HIV prevention advocacy. Clear articulation of what you intend to gain from this program. Why are you here? Why should we pick you? What do you want to learn? Uh, extremely important availability and time to be able to commit to the program. If you submit an application and it sounds like you have three jobs and two volunteer opportunities and you're on a ton of committees, um, that's not going to sound to us like you have the time and space to be able to engage with, with the program materials. Um, relevant professional experience. We do want to make sure that the people that we're recruiting, um, you know, have career aspirations or at least personal interest in this space. You do not have to be, um, you know, extremely experienced, but just, you know, demonstrating that this interests you and that you have enough of a background to be able to comprehend, understand, and engage with the materials. Um, and then I'll say it again, we've said it a couple of times before, this year we're really looking for newer and earlier career advocates. If you're the executive director of your organization, if you've been working in this space for 10 years, even you know six, seven years, this might not be the right opportunity for you. We're really trying to help jumpstart and you know fuel newer advocates and newer individuals in this space. Um, the application process is fairly straightforward. Um, we have the application materials available on our website. The application form itself can be downloaded and filled out. It's a Word document. It includes basic information about the candidate and then some essay questions that we ask you to respond to. Please keep within the word limits. More is not necessarily better. And then we ask you to submit your CV or resume along with that. Um, please submit your application form and your CV to the fellows at avac.org email address in one email. Please do not send multiple emails. We also are asking this year, um, we're doing it a little bit differently. So if you are currently employed, volunteer, part-time or full-time, we're asking that you that your employer fill out an employer acknowledgement form. The link is on the application itself. It's also on our website. And this form really just says, I understand that this candidate is applying. I understand the, um, the time commitment that it will require, and I support them in um, applying to this opportunity. If they are successful, we will support them and make sure that they have the time and the space that they need to complete the uh, program requirements. If you're not employed, at all, and you're not volunteering, and you're not in even part-time, then we ask you to send in a professional reference letter, which can just be a basic letter describing how this person knows you, um, in what capacity or capacities they've engaged 
with you in the past and then why they would recommend you for the program. Again, if you're submitting a reference letter, include that in that one email to the fellows at avac.org email address. We do not want to receive multiple emails. It gets very confusing and there's a good chance that your application will be looked at as incomplete. So we just want to make sure all your application materials are sent together in one email by March 8th, 2024. Um, we don't need to go over the mentor applications because we will have a separate session for them. But that's it from me. I apologize for speaking quickly. It was a lot of information, but I want to make sure we leave time for questions. Um, I see we have a couple of questions in the chat. So let me just peek at those really quickly. Great question, Sina. Um, so this is really not necessarily young people. You don't have to be, your age does not have to be uh, young, but we are looking for people with less experience. Um, people who, for example, we really start from the basics. We start from, you know, what is HIV? What is HIV prevention? Uh, how does it interact with STIs? We really go into all the different methods, condoms, PrEP, PEP. It, it really is very comprehensive. So people who will benefit the most from this are people who are earlier in their careers. If you've had experience in this space before, a lot of it would probably be redundant and not necessarily new to you. Um, and we're trying to connect younger, greener advocates with the networking and the experiences they might not otherwise have. Um, did that answer your question or can I expand on that further? Yeah, thank you. You did. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Another question on the line. Just um, below that. Great. The question from Joyce, I see, will the program discriminate people who have been working in the field, but not in issues concerning HIV? No, you do not necessarily need to have any experience working in HIV, but you do need to demonstrate why you're interested in working in this space and how you plan to apply this to your career or your future plans. Um, we will not discriminate against anyone who wants to apply, as but we will be looking for and prioritizing those things that we just went through. Demonstrated interest, demonstrated availability, um, show us how you want to apply this to your career and how you, how you intend to benefit from it. Yes, Manju, over to you. So there are a lot of questions about eligibility and rightly so. And this is a very competitive program we're looking to take on 12 fellows, I mean, 12 navigators. So you can imagine a lot goes into reviewing and selecting the navigators. So I want to be clear. There are many, many opportunities in our field for people to grow their skills and grow their learning. This program is for greener advocates. The purpose is to really expand the number of advocates working in this field and give them an opportunity, give them a jump start. If you are an executive director, if you've been working in the field a number of times, I'm really delighted to hear that because that means you've had a lot of opportunities to learn new skills, meet new folks, and, and get a lot of learnings. These are for people who are newer, who want to get into the field, but um, it's hard. It's hard to get into advocacy. For those of us who've done it, it's hard to get a leg in. It's hard to understand the strategies. A lot of people say they are doing advocacy with, with not too much training. So this really is for greener advocates. If you are a leader in your organization, I encourage you to look around at the, the eager junior staff you have who are hungry for more opportunities, who want to learn more and encourage them to apply. Um, so just wanted to be clear, uh, we are going to look at every single application that comes our way. We are going to be really focused on uh, the goals for the program, but we are looking for advocates with less experience because we really want to support the growing of the field. Thank you. Thank you. Here we have a hand up from Musa. Yeah, uh, so it's good afternoon here for me. 
Um, so then um, I've got a quick question and I wanted to find out. Um, and then again, I should just like put up a disclaimer. I just joined. Um, I just joined this this LA, but like I I had I do not have like much prior information to read because a friend of mine just shared it and thought that it would really be a good fit for me. So, but then um, during the slides, I saw something where uh, uh, after the three months, then um, the PN navigators will be given like a chance to implement a project. So then um, I wanted to find out. Is it that, for example, if maybe you're coming from an organization, does it then mean that uh, your host organization, quite all right, you're going to be prepared with a mentor, but then does your host organization um, get to be like in the loop, for example, where maybe like issues around resources, issues around financial reports, so that in as much as uh, we're preparing to apply for this, we at least let uh, these organizations know right ahead of time that maybe there could be a need of this, this, and this. And I understand maybe it could be too early to ask this, but I just wanted to have this in the back of my mind. Thank you. Thanks, Musa. That's a great question. So this program does differ from the fellows program in that we do not have host organizations. This is really something that the individual engages in um, on their own and with their mentor as a learning opportunity. The project is not meant to be you know, fully integrated into an organization because we don't want um, to limit this to people who have an organization who will support them and will support their project. That said, if you are working for an organization and you are implementing a Navigator project, there's absolutely no problem with working with your organization to help you, for example, organize a focus group or tap into their networks to you know, conduct community sensitization or something like that. Um, but the, the point, though, is that you can really implement these on your own Journal of an organization. And the grants are quite small. So we don't ask you to do any type of financial reporting. What we do is we will ask you to put together a, a very basic budget. And then in your final report, you will tell us what the funds were used for. But we don't ask you to engage a finance team of any kind. Uh, part of the learning actually is that you do learn to manage your own you do learn to manage your own budget. Um, so you do not need a host organization. You do not need an employer. You do not need anybody to engage with and be successful in this program. But if you have those resources and if your project is in line with some of the work that they're doing, then you know we welcome you to take advantage of that. But it's definitely not a requirement. I hope that answered your question. I'm happy to clarify if there's still anything that's unclear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. To be honest, it really did because, uh, uh, you know, it can get a little bit complicated, uh, most especially, maybe, for example, your notes, maybe you're uh, working with this organization on a voluntary basis. So then again, it gets complicated that you're asking the organization maybe to send some issues like around financial reports, maybe they need to send in a financial plan and all that. So uh, for the fact that uh, it's something that we can work around individually, then it's well and good. And thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. And again, if you're a volunteer or an organization, all we ask is that they sign the employer acknowledgement form, making sure that they're aware that you've applied and that if you are accepted, they will support you spending time during, um, um, on the requirements of the program. Um, I see in the chat that someone has asked how many advocates um, we want from one country. So um, we don't have a limit. Um, it, the applications will really speak for themselves. That said, we we do try to have um, a range of countries represented and a range of issues and advocates represented. I think the most that we had from a single country last year, Manju, correct me if I'm wrong, is two. Um, so we had 12 navigators from nine different countries. So I believe we had two from Kenya, two from Uganda, two from Tanzania. Everywhere else we had one. Um, so we will keep that in mind. If if we are narrowing down the strongest applicants and we have, say, six from Kenya, we're not going to choose six Kenyans. Um, so we will um we will be looking for some diversity there, but no, no hard and fast limit. Thank you for that question. The application email seems invalid. How come? Is this the Is this the email that you've been using, fellows at avac.org? I see that question come in from Hilda. If you are having issues submitting the application to that email, um, you can get in touch with me directly and we can sort it out. Sure. Any other questions before we uh, start to bring our panel on board here and, and hear from them? 
Okay, great. Well, if anything comes up, throw up a hand, come off mute or uh, put your question in the chat. We'll be happy to get to it. Um, now I am excited to welcome uh, three members of 20, our 2023 program. We have Alice Kayongo, who was a, a mentor from Uganda. We have Rhoda Msiska, who was a navigator from Zambia. And then we have Doreen Mara, who is from Kenya and who actually just presented her, her project on a previous call. So she's been spending a lot of time with AVAC today. Uh, so thank you so much, Doreen, for joining us again. Um, but I'm going to invite the three of you to come off mute, come on video if you would like to, not required. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, until we have questions, I think we have one kind of coming in here. As a journalist, is it okay to publish any content about AVAC on our media platform? That's a great question. And for the navigators who are involved, that will be um, a case-by-case -case basis. So we would ask you to let us know, and then we can discuss that. Um, we can discuss that as a group before making a decision. But in general, yes, we, we do have you know, things about AVAC posted on other platforms, but we do wanna make sure that it's just, it's in line with our, um, with the program goals and with our messaging. Okay, Doreen, Alice, and Rhoda, welcome. Um, so just to, to jumpstart this conversation really quickly, maybe we can start with Alice. Alice, um, to anybody who's thinking about applying to this program, what, what advice would you give them or what would you tell someone who's interested in applying who is maybe newer to AVAC or newer to the uh, Advocacy Navigator? Thank you. Thank you so much, Hannah. And uh, hi to everyone. Um, sorry, I won't be able to come on video, <laughs> but i um, happy to meet you all. Uh, first of all, the advice that I would give to someone who's interested in this project, you know, uh, one is that I would let them know that um, this could be a, 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 an opening into a huge career ahead of them. So they need to take this very seriously, um, apply with interest, express interest, but also express interest in the program uh, at application phase, but also do express that interest throughout the program implementation process and possibly even after. Um, I have worked with navigators um, for the previous years for the past two cohorts, and I have seen how far, um, you know, my navigators have actually moved from not being advocates whatsoever to being some of the best advocates that we have in the region, but also globally. So I would advise that, um, you know, the, the interest that you are putting in right now, um, you should continue having that much interest or even more during pro the, the, the implementation, but even after implement the implementation phase. Thanks, Hannah. Great, thank you so much, Alice. And Alice yeah. really is a, a star mentor. She's um, she's really been supportive of it from the very beginning, like way before my time at AVAC, <laughs> she's been supporting this program. So thank you to Alice for that. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Doreen. Doreen, do you mind just sharing with us your thoughts on the program and any advice that you might give someone who's interested in applying? Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, hi, everyone. Doreen Moracha is my name. I'm a navigator from the second cohort. And uh, to me, I can say that uh, my experience was actually very beautiful, but also challenged me from an individual point of view. One, uh, on the learning part, because there's a lot of learning material as well, and uh, you have to really, really commit to ensuring that you grasp what uh, you are supposed to learn, because it's going to help you as you proceed to creating the uh, the bigger projects that uh, you can also implement as a tiny project, the community-based project. So uh, the first thing is I learned a lot uh, on the reading and learning material. And uh, on the second part, I was also challenged on the aspect of collaboration and partnership when it came to imp implementing my community uh, project, because I've not really, in my advocacy work, I've not really collaborated with so many people. But on this particular one, I had to collaborate with uh, another organization and I had to be very specific on what community project I was going to uh, to implement. 
because it's it's a very small timeline. So you have to be really, really, really committed. And I know that in the advocacy space, sometimes you find that we are so engaged in so many things. So your commitment has, has to come first because you're putting your heart and your and your abilities onto, onto these things. And you're also open to learn and um, get other skills along the way. So to me, I can say I had such an amazing experience. I would advise you to go for it, but I would also advise you to be very, very, very committed to this particular project because it helps you grow as an advocate. It helps you expand your knowledge as well. It helps you uh, get to the, the, the gaps that have been left behind in the HIV response. I think sometimes when you look at it, you're like, oh, maybe everybody has done everything, but no, we, have, we still have a very huge <laughs> in the HIV response that is yet to be covered. For example, my community advocate. Go ahead, Doreen, sorry about that. Did she fall off the line? Hello. Oh, you're back, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think I have connection issues. So, uh, for example, I was saying my community project was based on uh, the unmet HIV prevention needs for adolescent girls and young women. And uh, this is a particular cohort that has been left as a blind spot, especially in the HIV response for my country, Kenya. So it's something I have never really worked with uh, this particular cohort. And uh, I learned a lot. I got the gaps, I got why they've been left behind. And uh, we're trying to, I'm also trying to push from a policy level to see how uh, they we can change the policies around HIV prevention for adolescent girls and young women in the HIV response. So to me, I can say that I had a very beautiful learning experience. I can say that I got to interact and meet other new people. I got to make, make other friends in other countries who are also the other navigators. And uh, I can say that it's such an amazing experience so far. And AVAC has been there for us, supported us throughout the way, uh, throughout the, the the six months that we were, was it, was it six months, Hannah? It was six months. <laughs> yeah, it was three months, of course, we're three months of the program, yeah. So they supported us all the time. And also the fact that you're given a mentor, because in the time that I've been an advocate, I've never really had a mentor. I've always just been winging it. So having a mentor, that there, there's a time I was stuck uh, and my mentor just came through and was like, no, you see, things are easier when you have a mentor. So I would encourage uh, you who is interested to please go ahead and apply and know that you're going to get all the support you need. Thank you so much. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Doreen. Um, okay, actually, wait, sorry, one moment, multitasking. Rhoda, um, would you like to share with everyone what, any advice that you might have or any anything about your experience with the program? All right. Um, thank you, Hannah. I'm unable to, just like Alison, I'm able to turn on my video right now. I hope that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, okay. Um, thank you so much. Good afternoon, good morning to everyone. I'm Rodam Siska, 2023 Advocacy Navigator from Zambia. And it's really great um, to be with everybody on the call. So um, similar to Doreen's, I think our experiences were very similar. Um, the Advocacy Navigator program was really an amazing experience and it really opened up um, so many doors, especially when it came to um, creating and making new networks. So um, through the program, I was really able to build my, my advocacy skills and you know to just learn about advocacy tactics that I didn't even know about. Because you know, before the program, you know, I would boast and say, oh yeah, I'm an advocate in this, I'm an advocate in that. But only through the program was I really able to learn like, wow, you know, there's really so much out there. And I was really able to build my skills through that. And um, I think the piece of advice that I would give is something that my mentor, so my mentor was actually Alice who, um, who spoke before Doreen. And the piece of advice which she always gave to us as her navigators was enjoy the process. And I really internalized this and it really um, was very helpful in terms of um, the success of my community uh, project and also the success with um, completing my, my coursework. Cause um, like Doreen mentioned, 
it's a lot. It really does require a lot of um a lot of dedication because you cannot just sit around and be lazy about it. You really need to be dedicated in order to complete your coursework, in order to complete all your um your assignments. But something that I found very helpful was actually enjoying it because you know if you feel like you know, this is something that you have to do, you, you know it starts it starts to feel like it's a burden. But if you really enjoy it, you know I would always look forward to to getting into engaged to you know to do my courses to even you know do Hannah's tests at the end of it I was always looking forward to that to say like okay am I going to get 100% or will I be at 80 I really enjoyed that and that was because I you know enjoyed the the whole process that was a lot of fun and in the end you know I was able to majority of the time be on time with all of my coursework and I ensure that I was done with majority of of my assignments um the other piece of, of advice I would give, um, uh, sort of the opposite to what Doreen mentioned, is take advantage of um, what you already have. I think that those are the best words that I can use, especially when it comes to the implementation of your community project. So for me, I was able to take advantage of the networks that I have because I work at sub-national level, working with the Ministry of Health. So they were very helpful when it came to the implementation of my program. So if, uh, for example, I needed to mobilize um, adolescent girls through the health facility and conduct some focus group discussions, um, if I needed to get um, permission to speak to some healthcare workers on their experiences, in terms of providing HIV prevention services to young people under the age of 16, this was easy because I already had that established um, relationship from uh, from the work that I was already doing. So I would also advise that you know you take advantage of uh, the things that are already um, available available to you. Um, I think that's it for me. Thank you, Hannah. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Rhoda. Um, and thank you to the three of you for joining us today. It's really great to hear directly from you. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to anybody who has a question specifically for them or about the program. This is your chance. They have been there. They have done it. <laughs> they know better than me what it's like to go through the program. Any more questions? Okay, if you haven't seen the chat, I welcome anybody to put their email in the chat and I will share the recording and the slides with you. Um, we will also get this up on our social media and we will get this on the website. So if anybody wants to share the recording with anyone in their network, we welcome you to do that. Um, Alice, I see your hand up again, please welcome. Thank you, Hannah. Um, I meant to mention, but I forgot that, uh, you know, speaking as a mentor, um, and speaking to those who would really want to be part of this program, um, the the one thing, uh, you know, like Rhoda and Doreen have said, um, make use of the resources that you have. Doreen actually underscored the fact that you will be having mentors. And so it's very good for you to take advantage of the mentors. However, Please note that the mentors are not there to look for you or to um, uh, spoon feed you, but rather to guide you. So it is best that, um, you know, anyone interested is also ready to reach out, to be proactive, uh, to proactively reach out to their mentors and, uh, you know, learn from them, um, ask questions, uh, get guidance, get advice, but not wait for the mentor to reach out. Once in a while, the mentor may be able to reach out, but that will not be a standard. And so it is best that whoever is interested actually is prepared to proactively uh, make use, uh, maximize, you know, the time that you will spend with your mentors. Six months may seem quite long now, but when you start, I'm sure Doreen and Rhoda will, will are, are witnesses to this. Once you start, before you know you have, uh, you, you're done with month one and then month two, and then in a flash of a second, you're, you're getting to the end of the program. So it's better to think, plan, and then execute as fast as possible. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alice. And I'm actually really glad that you brought that up. That's a really good point. So your mentor is there to support you. Your mentor is there to reinforce what you've learned, to help you network, to help you make the make use of everything that you that you're gaining through this program. They are not there to babysit you. They are not there to keep you on track and force you to do your work. That's really on you. Um, we ask our mentors, you know, to check in to, you know, they show up on time, you show up on time mutual respect, but they are not there to, you know, push you to do your work and they will be our sort of eyes and ears. So as I mentioned, you know, only the people who, um, you know, complete their coursework and attend their meetings, um, who really take advantage of this opportunity are the ones who will be eligible for the project grant. Yeah. So mentors will be, um, our eyes and ears to, to see happening. And sorry, I'm going to mute you, um, to see if that's actually happening. So thank you again for, for that, Alice, you know, these, these people who serve as mentors are busy. Uh, they have a lot to offer. Um, but they are, you know, it is not their job to, to keep track of you. So, um, we also had one more question in the chat. Uh, two questions, actually. Um, one question about getting caught up in a deadline. Um, you know, things happen. Life happens. People get sick. Um, sometimes you have to make an unexpected trip. Again, these things happen. We just ask that you be proactive and communicative. Um, if you can't get everything done one week, you can catch up the next week. Um, but please, uh, you know, we ask everybody who's accepted to the program to just be respectful and afford everyone else the same respect that you would expect in return. So if you're not going to have your work done, if you're not prepared for a meeting, if you're not going to have an assignment ready, message your mentor, email me, just let us know. And, um, you know, we can we can be flexible. We just understand that if, if that becomes a pattern or a habit, then, you know, you're really not able to take uh, advantage of the program as it is. Um, and we had a question if there were any Tanzanians who were engaged in the program. And the answer is yes, we had two actually um, in our last cohort and they were great. A challenge of accessing the application form. Um, Khadija, I will send the email with the recording. Feel free to reach out to me directly and I will send you the step-by-step -step instructions. And if you're still having an issue, then um, we can go from there. Actually, I can copy and paste the direct link here for you. Just give me one moment. Um, thank you, everyone who who did that. This is my this is my little instruction. Um, again, you cannot do the application on a phone. You have to do it on a computer, and it is uh, to be filled in on Word. So, if you have any issues with that, let me know, and we can try to find a workaround. Did I miss any questions? The particular formats for the coursework, yes. So um, the course is delivered on Engage and it combines a number of different formats. There are PowerPoint presentations, there are videos, audio formats, there's PDF readings, there's um, podcasts. Um, so we try to diversi diversify the content as much as we can. Um, each module also has required content, which is usually a little bit more limited in scope. And then we'll also provide um, additional resources. So if it's a topic you're particularly interested in, for example, post-exposure prophylaxis or the depivirine vaginal ring, we provide a, a number of additional resources so you can dive deeper and learn more about a, a particular topic. If there's also something that's missing or something you're interested in, you know, we encourage you to reach out to your mentor um, and they can also help connect you with resources. How many people will be in this program? Great question. So this year we're looking to recruit between um, 12 and 16. Is that right? 12 to 18. Um, there will be a number of things that um, that affect that number, but we're looking at a minimum of, of 12. Any other questions? We have about four minutes left. What's next after the program ends and my cat? Oh, thank you. That's Archibald. He's um, running around in the background here. There's actually two of them. Um, the program ends in December. And um, the goal here is really that through those six months that you, you know, through working with your mentor, through making connections in your country, through implementing your program, that you're actually, um, you know, making, you're networking, you're making these connections. And we hope that there's some sustainability involved in that. 
Um, we also, you know, are trying to involve the navigators in some of the more ongoing, um, the ongoing things that we do at AVAC. So becoming a part of our partner network when we have webinars, when we have calls, when we have calls to action, really engaging um, our navigators through that process. Um, we've also found that navigators are involved in other aspects of AVAC programming. So Doreen is on the line. She's also a CURE fellow. Um, you know, we have um, a number of people working across a number of different AVAC programs. So there are opportunities for engagement beyond the program, but it really just comes down to the individual, what their career goals are, what their aspirations are. Uh, but we do our best to help keep you engaged uh, in the same way that we would through any other AVAC program. Um, if you download the form using a computer on your phone, can you fill it in on the phone? No, I don't think you can fill in the application on your phone. I think it will be really challenging. There are some essay questions on there and it's in a word format, so it's going to be challenging. Also, we do look to make sure that it's filled out on a computer because a, um, a computer was required, is required for, um, to be able to go through Engage, you can't access Engage on your phone. We ask you to please use a laptop. So um, you do need to have access to a desktop or a laptop computer to be able to um, successfully go through the program. And uh, I'm sure our um, our alumni here can speak to it. It's, um, it's very dense and it's a lot of information. And it will be challenging on a phone. Um, Boniface asks if we can provide a recording of this session. We absolutely can. Please just make sure you drop your email in the chat and we'll make sure to share it with you. Yes, and I just want to echo what Manju said in the chat. Good luck to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you, if you decide to apply, uh, we do wish you the best of luck. Um, we're always here if you have any other questions that come up outside of this call. Um, and I'm going to pause for one moment. We have about two more minutes and this is your last chance to speak to Alice and Doreen and Rhoda. So if you have any last questions for them, I encourage you to ask them now. Right. I think that's it. Uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, we look forward to reading your applications. Uh, Manju, would you like to close us out with anything? Uh, the last thing I'll say is just a reminder that the deadline is the 8th of March. So we look forward to receiving your applications by then. Good luck, everyone, if you choose to apply. And if you don't think the program is for you based on what you've heard, uh, especially being able to commit the amount of time that Hannah described, uh, as well as your level of uh, access already to learning and networking. Well, if you decide to apply, good luck. If not, please share this with your networks and with the uh, individuals who you think could really benefit from this and have a good rest of the week, everyone. Hey, thanks so much, Manju. Thanks everyone Thank for the rest of your Thank day. You. you too, bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.